Hey, this is an overview of the Project 125. I'm going to do enough to help you get started on this project and hopefully some direction of what to look up if you're kind of stuck and don't know where to begin. But I'm not doing the answers, all right? Just kind of pointing you on the way. And if you need more help than that, um, ask me if you're my students or ask your teacher, all right? So what do you do in It's a Trap? Uh, the idea in this project is it's a mini cyber case has come to your attention. A friend has come to you after inheriting her sister's computer. And after using it for one day, she's already lost some data and suspects there may be security problems on the computer. She feels that she does any more work on the computer, it'll likely walking into a trap. So we are going to fix things. Now, in this project, what's nice, after, I'm assuming you've made your teams and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go to here. So step six, they give you this nice plan of action of what to look for. And each of these five things are related to something that we've done in this whole 1.2 section of this class. So I'm going to refer you where, so I think these five things are kind of your guiding things to find the problems. Now you might find additional problems and the way you document this, you might document more than five. You might break it up into chunks. That's fine. But no, here's what I'm expecting you to do, especially if you're in my class. So I want you to start with brainstorming. You pick your teams or random or whatever I'm doing this year. Uh, the answer these questions for your plan of action. So it's broken into the five sections right here. So firewall rules. How do you just, this is, these are kind of guiding questions to like point you where to go for this project. All right, so trying to give you some help here. So let's talk about let's talk about these things and where I'm going to find these in into my in my lesson. So firewall rules. How will you disable Windows file sharing, and are there services ports you need to disable? So keywords here. Remember services ports and this file sharing. If you want to know how to do all that, that happens. Back here in activity 1.2.121, firewalls and malware. So look back at this. And you know, they talk malware. I think you can skip that part. I don't think we're dealing with suspicious websites right now. I don't think so. But go, and then this is talking about how to do the control panels because this was early on, right? I think where you want to start here is look up where we talked about the firewall protection. And especially... Down here in these steps, like, hey, remember this screen? Maybe you, you know, that's the kind of stuff we did. Uh, we also went into some advanced settings, talked about the in and outbound rules. And then we talked about ports in here. Like, what ports did you want to actually have open or not? So, if you don't remember a lot of this, maybe browse through this lesson again or go back to what you did. Because that's the key things to look at. So start where it says firewall protection and kind of go back to some of this. I don't think you need to do log files or any antivirus. Uh, maybe. Maybe you look at the antivirus stuff. I don't know. Depends on what you find. All right. So that's what I do to check out firewall. The next one on here was suspicious files. How can you identify suspicious files? And I think it's also related to, um, oh, let's just list suspicious files. I think, I think that was under file management here, one, two, two. So one thing, things we did in file management is we talked about how to like browse things and explore, right? And see the folders. So other, other things we did in this activity, uh, we talked about different extensions and about which ones are suspicious and not, and like, I think around this activity and different type extensions uh, are, are bad and not, and how to see those types of extensions, like if it's one of those bad ones. So check out the whole like, file name extensions section that we did. Talked about file ownership. That might be a thing to check too. And hidden encrypted files. We talked about that. So check out this information on how to detect suspicious files. Because those are the kind of things that maybe make it suspicious. Downloaded files. How do you know where to look for files downloaded from the internet? I think that happened in securing your browser. Either that or file management. But 
in here we talked about, oh, changing settings on like Chrome and then the HTTPS thing. Maybe that's relevant. Uh, we checked on the downloads and how to asking for downloads. And I think there was a thing in there like, well, where did downloaded files go? So check, check in. Okay, probably it went too far, but. So check in one, two, four, just review what we did about securing the browser. There's probably some stuff in there to check out. One, two, four. All right. Uh, next one, lost deleted user files. So where do you find your friend's deleted files? We just say like you're on a, a PC. Where, where do deleted files go? I don't know. That might have been in 122. Might have been in 124. But I'm just going to ask you. Where did deleted files go? Leave it there. Um, suspicious processes. Okay, how do you determine a suspicious process and what do you do with them? I'm pretty sure that's going to be in 123 process management. So we did a lot of activities in here. I felt like this was kind of like the weirdest thing for you guys right now because we don't really do, you had to do like com the PowerShell stuff. And we talked about process ownership. Um, we talked about using task manager to see what's running on my computer and to see like who's like, what are the authors or who, who created those things running. And then we talked in here about how to kill a process and like how to identify which process was the parent process. That might be relevant to this. I'm not sure. You might have to do that kind of stuff in PowerShell again. I don't know. But we talked in here how to identify with the task manager. I think that's the main thing in there. So look at that. So again, for suspicious processes, check what you did in one, two, three. All right. So after you do all those things, what I'm going to have you do in my class, so the way I'm going to ask you to document things is you write your problem and then you write your steps to fix the problem. How many problems should you have again? Probably at least five, but you might, I'd say five to 10. And it, there's, you might find problems that aren't on those list of those five things. I, I could, I've seen things on there that I, maybe I would identify as a problem. Even when I did the training for this, like there were things I thought were problems, but oh, that was just normal. That was just maybe a weird thing on this virtual machine, right? So I don't know, whatever you find. But if you think it's a problem, document it, right? It's no problem. Doing extra things that weren't, prob that weren't the required problems this is good to do too. I mean, that shows that you're doing stuff. There probably should be, so if your bare minimum, I would have one thing related to each of these categories. If you can't find the problem related to each of these, that's where I would go to your teacher and maybe see if you can get some extra hints. If you don't know. Now, you'll probably find some extra ones. And, or maybe you break your problems up differently. All right. Now, last thing before we stop this. I'm going to go to the project again. How do you set up your machine? So you might have, it's, you got to do the virtual lab that's in 125 here. Go down to step nine. You open this up. I've opened it up here. But you have to set the machine up to have the problems. And this is step 10. If you forget this, like you come back to it the next day, I want you to go to activities folder and double click set up project 125 and then hit done. All right. So you're here. I opened up the security lab, did it before. It takes like five minutes. Go to activities. And where it says set up project 125, just double click. And it'll pop up and say done. Whenever you run this, it messes up everything on here. Now, you didn't see anything change, right? But it's okay. It all did in the background. Now, what if you get to a point that you're messing around with things and like you mess things up? Just reset your lab. Go up to system, reset the lab, probably take another five minutes. I'm not going to sit here and wait for it. And then run that activities and the project one, two, five setup again. All right. Hopefully that helps you get started. But 
If you need more help or hints, some direction you get stuck, don't be afraid to ask. Thank you.